Church, your pastor has been speaking about Nigeria for a while. A meeting took place in this premises some two years or so ago. And um, Naji, you want and to put me into trouble. <laughs> we, we've gone past that. <laughs> I've been waiting on God for himself or any of the other people we went to tell what God was doing to solve these impossible problems. Which problem? The problem of Nigeria. The reason, I came, the reason I came here today, I needed just 10 minutes with him to tell him what has happened beyond what I had heard, because uh, sometime last week or so, overnight, I got more than 20 of the same video of him pronouncing the name of the sickness of Nigeria. He said it was the constitution and that we shouldn't, that Nigeria says come under that constitution and that we cannot get to another change of power, I mean election and people going to government house under that constitution. That video had traveled so much that the people who took seven months to listen to us in the US in 2019, the decision makers of the United States of America, from Congress to State Department to the executive branch, across the two parties, they began to send that same video to me to say it appears the matter is now at a resolution. In one week, in one week, in one week, we had Sunday today, between the 28th of April and 30th of April, the world powers who have vested interest in Nigeria, the US, the UK, the European Union, came to the same decision concerning this country. The US was the first to tell the government in Abuja that these matters are so complicated, it's not something we can deal with from where we are. Go talk to your people. The next day, the UK said their partnership with Nigeria will not solve this one. Go talk to your people. Then, the day after, European Union made it plain, said, this matter, move away from gun. Guns will not solve anything. Not your gun, not our gun. Go to dialogue with the owners of the land and rework the legal instrument. I tell you, the foundation of the problem has been removed. There's nothing anybody's going to do about it anymore. And I just came to, I came to, I came to church today, I had so many things to do, but I said, before I go to any part, anywhere else, let me come and tell this man of God that his, his courage in, in saying what he said, and if you know who else have been told the same thing in this land, but who have been paralyzed by fear from saying it. But it's been said, and by the grace of God, it's been done. That monster tormenting Nigeria is dead. I wanted to, see, I wanted to meet with him in private to tell him this. But when he was looking around for people who will come to say, this is what this is the biggest thing God has done in this uh, in the last 50 years that we will live through this problem and it will not consume us pause for a moment on the Sunday that I preached a sermon in the rooted in Christ series at the end of the sermon something came upon me to speak to the issues of Nigeria and I had no idea that somebody not from house on the rock would take a seven minute, 15 second excerpt and that it would go virulent to the degree that it ended up in Whitehall, it ended up in Washington DC, ended up in places that I'm astonished by. I went about my business knowing, knowing nothing about how viral it would go. Monday morning, I came to get a workout at the gym here and I uh, got out of my workout and I went to a consultation with the 
political deaths from one of those big five nations he mentioned. And I spoke my heart as a stakeholder in Nigeria whose parents for two generations have worked for this country and this was not the Nigeria they dreamed of. And for one intervention to ruin our hopes was not acceptable to me. And I bore my heart out. I've learned diplomacy and how to talk to diplomats over the last 15 to 20 years of engaging with the big five. And when I was done in that meeting, I knew something had happened. I just could not put my finger on it. When I got home, I started getting calls about a video. And for the next two weeks, I was being called about this video. I'm still getting calls about the video. I didn't know, and, I, and my, my speech about the Constitution of Nigeria being a very flawed document, um, uh, and maybe the best one since the First Republic would be the 63, but even 63, by me, is not acceptable. I would want to go all the way back to 1914, the amalgamation. Yeah. Um, and he had spoken to me years ago, it wasn't even in my mind. It was having studied a little bit um, about Nigeria, where are our problems? Men swear oaths to be loyal to a constitution and they do the exact opposite thing when they get into office. That is a lack of honor. We do not need dishonorable men leading any aspect of the three tiers of government or the three arms of government in Nigeria. And um, I saw him there, I said, it looks like him. <laughs> He's a troublemaker. <laughs> He's really a troublemaker. But he's given his life and his heart to ensure that the framework upon which Nigeria stands or the peoples of this geography or contraption stand is an authentic document of the sovereign conference of the sovereign owners of this geographic space. And that makes about, my last count was about 270 something different ethnic groups. And it must be dealt with. It cannot continue to be sold a scam and take it and then be enslaved by people who feel it's their birthright to own us and own our land and own our assets and our resources. It's not acceptable to me. And I do not believe I stand alone. I believe I speak with the voice that resonates for the majority of the people that call themselves Nigerian. I'm also sick and tired of holding a green passport that brings me so much stigma every time I travel to go and preach the gospel. I want a passport that gives me honor and dignity that allows me to travel like the kings that we Nigerians ought to be. We're not slaves, we are better than that. We have resilience, we have intellectual power. Nigerians are not the problem, it is the political class. Yeah, Nigerians excel everywhere else in the world. They're at the top of the treasury in the United States, they're at the top of World Bank, they're at the top of other countries, they're at the top of science, arts, name, name the uh, fields of discipline or fields of endeavor. We are the very best. We excel to the very top. And if we cannot find a political process and develop a political architecture built on a framework that is an authentic uh, document of the wish of we the people, then we do not have a great country. A great country is made from an agreement that becomes a documentation that serves as a foundation for our people. Our people therefore have to go elsewhere to excel because the enabling environment is not available to us. Nigeria can be the greatest country on the face of this earth. And my prayer, my hope, is that my children's children will see Nigeria become great and they will rush back from all the far-flung countries they've gone to the same way that somebody started prophesying in the 1930s, 1940s. And everybody now started to publish that word and the Jews came back from all over the world to build their own nation and occupy their own geography and do it with justice and equity. And now they are a world power when they were not even a people prior to 1940. Nigeria has a great destiny. And courageous men like that, there are many, but please remember that you are favored. So come out of timidity and let's go forward and let us, without physical weapons, but we have weapons of our spiritual warfare by which we can do damage to the plan of the enemy, destroy the architecture of his in intention and his agenda and build a new process so that it will not be touts that take over the political class and hence take over government, but it will be the righteous, the best serving the rest, not the worst lording it over the rest. I rest my case, I have to go.